we were asked to do a streamer pattern and probably one of the most recognized streamer patterns that's somewhat forgotten is the Doc Spratly. It started originally as a caddis pupa uh, imitation and it came out of southern BC. Um, but what I'll be doing is mounting uh, a 1750 size 8 Daiichi uh, to develop the streamer pattern. We will follow all the traditional colors but we'll be following along uh, the proportions of a, a streamer. So we're not really going to change anything um, other than the hook style from what it was originally intended and to take it from a nymphal pattern into a streamer pattern. So we're just going to start with a standard threading procedure. I'm using uh, Nano Silk, in this case Sexot, which is very heavy for this particular pattern. Um, traditionally what I'd be I would personally use is um, a 12 aught, but I happen to have 6 aught loaded up, so I'm going to spin this on. And right at the bend of the hook, which starts about there, which is usually somewhere between the point and the barb. put in some uh, pheasant rump for a tail, which we'll also use as a wing, and we will also use it as a, a thorax. Uh, this is this rump has a lot of blue in it, so it's a very mature bird, probably five plus years. Uh, more difficult to get uh, than it than need to be, but uh, the blue rumps are really desirable, uh, spe especially for this pattern. So we'll just pluck a smaller feather, clean away all the junk and that we're not going to work with and I'll cut a small V out of this feather uh, just so that we can roll a nice nice little tail. So I'm going to the V's out and we'll just probably use about this much material here. roll a V in, into that, that V up, and traditionally a tail is uh, about a hook gap length on a streamer, and we'll just a couple of turns, and we'll snip off the body, or the stem near the end of the body length. We'll do that just so that we can start building up uh, some underbody. You know, primary body will be made from Angora wool, uh, black Angora wool. Uh, it's another one of the products that seems to have fallen by the wayside in most uh, fly tying and in fly shops. You seldom see it, so you pretty much nowadays have to order it online. Uh, so I'm going to bring my thread up to the front here. Wool. Again, this will help develop a thicker underbody as we progress along the fly here. And for a rib, generally we use a silver wire. Um, it's also been uh, copper wire or hot orange wire has, has worked well as, as well. And I'll be using some hot orange this pattern. And here I'm using a ultra wire. It's a small and a hot orange. And it's more to secure the Angora. Angora wool, in, in the situation that I have, it's Angora rabbit, not goat. It's, it can be fairly soft to work with and Trout's tooth will actually uh, tear it fairly easily. So I like to just put in an extra little rib just to help keep the angora together. So I'm just bring it up to where the wing is going to start and we'll just start wrapping the angora. Try to create 
a bit of a scar shape. So we'll come about half ways down the body and then return with a bit more open turns and then slide that back forward. Whatever works for you to, to help you develop that bit of a cigar shape taper to, uh, to the fly. Whatever works best for you. So I've just tied off with three turns in front or on the material and tie off two turns to lock it. And then I'll throw in a half hitch here just to secure the material. And then we'll reverse wrap the wire. Usually doing about five turns. And I'll secure the wire. Notice I kind of reversed over the wire just to help pull it tight with the thread. scissor to cut the wire. You can also just wiggle it off if you choose. The wing I'll generally use two rump feathers uh, but larger ones near the back of the rump. Uh, the individual fibers are, are a bit longer. And we'll select a couple here and just sort of match up the ends and we'll clean non-usable material away so that we have something like that and then we'll snip out a V the center of the two, the two feathers and then we'll bunch it together, roll it together hopefully create a wing. And what we'll find is the feather will actually take a bit of a natural curve so I like to put this down in a kind of a convex position and we'll have the tips of the wings just come down to about halfway on the tail. We just measure that off there roughly and one, two, three, four Flare that up a bit. We'll snip this off. Flush. Tie, tidy that up some. Slowly building a bit of a head. And then for the beard or the thorax, I'll take another smaller rump feather from the cape. Clean the fluff and the junk away. Again, snip out the center. And draw this into a clump as well. With a bit of a roll, find the natural curve. In this case, we want the curve to go in a concave shape or position. And we'll position the pheasant rump underneath where the barbs are just barely touching the point in this, in this particular pattern. And we'll do one, two, three turns. And snip away. Careful not to cut the thread. And we'll just clean up a bit here. Tie that in, secure it. So the next thing that we add are jungle cock um, <clears throat> feathers for eyes and as you can see this jungle cock here has um, some fairly dark nails. There's a few splits but uh, there's uh, some premium quality nails in this. There's an older jungle cock you can notice here between the two of them, um, although I picked through this one, 
a lot of split nails and the nails themselves are not quite as dark or amber looking uh, as the ones on, on this particular kit. So the better jungle cock of course costs you better costs you a bit more money but in the, in the long run I think you'd be more happier with a with the product um, if you purchase something that's you know as good as, as you can afford. So I'm going to pull two eyes here roughly from the same area of the cape. And they don't have to be overly large. This is a fairly small pattern. Now I tie this pattern from a size 6 to a size 10 in a 4x long shank or even a 3x. And we'll just lay the two jungle cock eyes in place. Position them, keep them sort of centered. Three wraps there. And just adjust them if you're required. I like to keep the eyes as level to the lat. What would be a lateral line down the center of the body on the real on the real minnow. Um, just keep everything in line, and then just trim off the excess of the jungle cock. And we'll clean up a bit here. I'm going to develop a little bit of a base for a head. And I think really one of the things that makes this pattern work exceptionally well is the fact that we use peacock curl on the head. Uh, so we'll dress this up. We'll add in a little bit of head cement. But not overly much. We'll tap that off somewhat. And then we'll use peacock curl. For our head. Um, this particular pattern I've fished it on fairly lengthy leaders either with a floating line or the slow sink uh, often in the shallow flats in, in the fall time or even open water um, I generally fish it no more than six feet deep and um, it's been a very effective pattern to imitate our local minnows here in Alberta and British Columbia does a great job on sticklebacks and on uh, shiners. Oh, and there's our peacock curl. We'll just snip that off. And we'll do a whip finish. Three knot whip finish. And the second one. the dock spratly that's used very commonly here in uh, Western Canada. An extremely effective minnow pattern and fairly basic. Hope you enjoyed the fly. Thank you for watching.